Hi, everyone. Uh, I am super excited today because we have, for the second time, a really amazing guest, my, my good friend Jonathan Decker. Uh, he is joining me from really two terrific channels that if you have not subscribed to, you should. The first is Mended Light, which really focuses on trauma therapy. And the second is Cinema Therapy, which uh, really takes a psychological approach to looking at movie clips. And and Jonathan is a licensed therapist himself. Um, both channels are always full of lots and lots of insights. They're also a huge amount of fun. John, thank you for joining me today. Welcome. Thank you. And it's a pleasure to be back on your channel. We, uh, we started this journey over on Mended Light with a part one, looking at this uh, Netflix show, uh, Ginny and Georgia. So uh, we'll, there, there should be a link. I mean, it's your channel. I'm imagining there's a link there if they want to catch part one. Uh, there is. Like, but, watch more. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited to, to dive into part two with you today, Bob. Great. And part two, I understand, is uh, uh, Ginny and her mom um, at a – seeing a therapist, is that right? Seeing a therapist, yeah. Okay. And I think that's about all because I haven't seen the clip beyond that. And I confess I haven't seen the show either, although looking at the first clip, I mean, it seems like a show I want to look at. Yes. Uh Single mother, uh, I believe the father is dead, uh, mother of a 15-year-old daughter, 9-year-old son, and they're just trying to get by in life. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Georgia, how did finding out about Ginny's self-harm make you feel? This is just like The Sopranos. Mom, <laughs> if you're going to stay, you have to do the thing, okay? Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Is this hard for you, the idea of therapy? Yeah, stay out of my head, please. Okay, let me pause really fast. We're only a few seconds in. I haven't watched the show, so maybe this I'm I'm only ten seconds in. I'm completely misjudging it. But a therapist is doing what they call resting B face. You know this uh, standoff. <laughs> <laughs> there's 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 a standoffish. Uh, there's already the standoffish energy coming from the therapist. Uh, it's not warm. It's not inviting. It's not. Uh, I'm curious. I genuinely am curious. And maybe by this point she's got every right to be annoyed with Georgia, but uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> so. I can tell you, John. Though a lot of my best negotiation moves I have learned from therapists, and I'm not joking about that. Okay. <laughs> um, we had a long-standing uh, collaboration between folks at the Family Institute of Cambridge, and I got to tell oh, awesome. you, it was, it was amazing. It, it, and I may truly have learned so much. Um, but one of the things that I would not have learned is a, a somewhat angry yes or no question, which is what this therapist does. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, usually you'd have a more open, like, how is this feeling for you? Or, right, or, right. You know, so, or again, we, like that. we have no context, but I'm, that's just my read right out of the gate. Okay, back to that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sorry, so I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is hard. How does it feel? Horrible. I'd do anything to protect her. So to know that she's feeling enough pain. Daughter's been self, to, daughter's been self-harming. To do that to herself in secret for so long. I, it sounds like it bothered you that Ginny kept this from you. Of course it bothers me. Ginny and I aren't normal mother, daughter, we're close, we're friends. But you're not friends. You're mother and daughter. Do you feel that you respect Ginny's boundaries? Is that what she says? Okay, so. Oh <laughs> Go ahead, Bob, what are you thinking? From a kind of just difficult conversations perspective, which is a domain in which I do teach, right? This is not building confidence. Um, it's not creating a sense of kind of trust and openness. It feels kind of sparky in a in a tension heightening way that it's hard to imagine, at least from my perspective, could be productive in the long run. Again, as you said, we are decontextualized here. We're just seeing this clip. But that's yeah that's my opinion. Well and and I'm seeing a mother who is confused why her daughter didn't open up to her and either hasn't considered that her own behavior, the mother's behavior, is the reason why her daughter hasn't felt safe to open up to her, or she's 
afraid to consider it. It's kind of there, and she's pushing it aside because she's got this paradigm that we're not like a normal mother and daughter. We're cool. It's a different relationship. We're friends. And the, and the therapist rightly says, but you're not friends. You're mother-daughter. Do you respect her boundaries, right? And Georgia, <laughs> Georgia, from what she said in the, in the past clip, she wants to protect her kids the way she wasn't protected. So I don't know a lot about her background, but just know that a lot of parents who come from abusive homes or neglectful homes themselves, they try and be the opposite and they overcorrect, mm. right? And so maybe Georgia felt like her parents were withdrawn or didn't care or weren't there for her. And so she's, her mission is, I'm going to be there for my kids. What that translates as to is they don't have personal space, personal lives, personal thoughts or feelings. I have the right to all of it so I can protect them. And we saw that in the last clip that we watched over on Mended Light, how the mom just kind of barges in and insists on seeing the burn wounds and insists on understanding. And she very much cares about her daughter. But I think a lot of times with parents and just with people, right, just in relationships and in negotiations, we assume my intentions are good. My heart is in the right place. Therefore, my actions are good. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't mean anything bad by it. And so it's kind of hard to see or even fathom that we're doing harm because we don't intend to do harm. So how could we, you know? Yeah. You know, I have two, I have kind of two, two thoughts on this. Well, maybe a thought and a question. My, my observation okay. is, I mean, this is something that in a lot of coaching work, um, I get a lot, right? There is an important negotiation here, which is a negotiation over the changing role between a parent and a child. And yeah. that negotiation can feel extremely threatening to both. Um, in this case, right, the child, Ginny, w probably wants a different kind of relationship with the mother, not no relationship, but more yeah. autonomy, more uh, privacy, more sense of that I am my own person. And Georgia uh, is probably seeing that as a threat to her role as mom and success to me is how do you renegotiate what it looks like to have an important role as mom to an adolescent as opposed to a child yeah so that's kind of my observation my question is maybe is really one for you um and your kind of expertise as a therapist because as a negotiator i would say that the therapist challenging the mom in front of the daughter, right, raises all sorts of kind of status and salience issues. Like if I were coaching the yeah. negotiator, I would be like, have this conversation, not in front of the daughter, where you might feel like you need to defend so that you save face with the daughter. But I yeah. wonder from a therapy perspective, is that different or what's your reaction to that? Uh, there's value in that in some circumstances and other circumstances, it's better to do it all together, uh, because it's family therapy and we're, we're getting it out in the open. The, the thing that a therapist would need to be mindful of, you know, it's kind of like if, if I'm carrying stacks of books, right. And at this point I'm, I'm teetering this way. And at that point I'm teetering that way. And the, the combination back and forth meets in the middle to balance and nothing falls. Right. I am now teetering towards joining with the daughter aligning with the daughter against the mother, at least for a minute or two. Uh, and it may be against is the wrong word, but that's how it can feel perceived, right? You, you could see it in the mother, the way she looks at her daughter, like, is this what you told her? The mom feels like the therapist and the daughter have been keeping confidences, right? Or, or, or they're, they're tag teaming me. And that's not always unhealthy or wrong. It's just sometimes you need those moments to upset the system. Sometimes you need those moments to give someone a wake up call, but you have to be mindful to restore the balance, right? Yeah. And so the, the next step would then be for, for Georgia to say her piece and for the therapist to, to aid Georgia in her daughter understanding and recognizing and validating that and finding some common ground. So that's what I would say. I don't respect her boundaries. You don't respect my boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. I think that this might be very productive. Okay, I know I'm not perfect, all right? Defensiveness. I mean, you think I knew how to be a mom? I was 15, Mary-Kate and Ashley never talked about this. And I just had to 
continuously bounce back from all this crap again and again and smile and be happy and shield you from all of it. I never had a childhood. At least she had a childhood. I know you did a lot for me. And I know it was hard. But until now, I've never lived in a town long enough to have a friend. I've always been the new girl, always alone. And that's all I knew, and it was hard. And I have the right to be upset by that. I have my own experience too, Mom. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> wow. <laughs> So mom's getting defensive, feels like she's being attacked and told that she's not a good mom, is trying to excuse herself and, and say, I was never taught how to do this. Do y'all y'all think I knew what I was doing? And the thing is, she's not being attacked. A mirror is being held up. But we're so used to defending ourselves from perceived attacks that even feedback, constructive feedback, uh, well-intended feedback or necessary feedback, we may block out of self-preservation and self-protection. And her daughter does a really great job of saying, I know you did a lot for me and I know you sacrificed a lot. Acknowledging implicitly, I didn't say you're a bad mom. In fact, in a lot of ways, you're a good mom. But I have a counselor on, on my team and she talks about something called the glorious and. And the glorious and is that two things can exist even if they seem dichotomous, they can exist in the same space and both be valid. For example, your parents could have worked hard to give you a good life and genuinely loved and cared about you, and some of their approaches were hurtful and even messed you up, right? Those two things can actually coexist in the same space, and, and it's not one or the other. It's not you're a good mom or you're a screw-up. And daughter sees that. And by validating mother's, her mom's worth and her mom's like what she did for her, you could see the defensiveness drop. And daughter's just saying, this is my experience. And to mom's credit, she goes, okay, right? She's, she's able to sit with it. And you can, all, you can also see that she's decided that the therapist is going to be the bad guy so that she can be close. Like, she's got to be mad at somebody. Doesn't want to be mad at her daughter, so she's going to be mad at the therapist. <laughs> Which, that's an occupational hazard. I, yeah. if, if, you, if you become a therapist to be liked, you're in the wrong field. <laughs> yeah. Same if you become a mediator. To be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, uh, your, your your take on this is is just exactly what I was um, looking at and thinking. Right, there's a way in which mom sees the criticism as an attack on her full identity, right? Her, yeah. So yeah. an either or piece, right? I either I'm like a successful good mom, or I'm not, right? And so. One of the things we talk about in difficult conversations is the way in which part of what makes it difficult, right? It could hit an identity trigger. And clearly this piece of feedback, right? You don't respect my privacy. is hitting a deep identity trigger, which is um, I am a good mom who fought hard yeah. for you. Yeah. 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 And part of the growth edge here, right? And I would say to, in fact, I often do an exercise um, in my class where I'll ask people to write down if they know three things about themselves, they know they are a, and fill in three adjectives, whatever they are, trusting, loving, and good. Then I ask them to think of the opposite of those three things. And then I ask them to think of a time in which they were the opposites in their life. Now, yeah. The purpose is not to make them feel crummy about themselves, but it is to say that even when we find something that we feel is most core to who we are, there are times in our life when we are not that. Yeah, and if we I love that. can be aware of that, it makes us more able to go into a hard conversation and take in some feedback and have a balanced and kind of integrating approach to it. Whereas if we are if our self identity is so fragile that we either have to protect or we're like, oh my gosh, you're right. I'm a horrible person. It makes it hard to be in a conversation like this. And so it does. So that's, I think, what's really interesting. I think the other thing that you said that is so right is this ability to go beyond the binary. I'm either a good mom or a failure. To be like, you can be both a good mom and you are and were. At the same time, like 
I have to have my own experience, right? And so this kind of core emotional need, this sense of kind of autonomy and identity um, that we see, you know, Ginny um, really asserting here is like a wonderfully helpful piece of negotiation work. It is. It is. And, and, and Ginny is leading out by example for her mother. Um, and I, I appreciate what you said. That's, it's very profound. I've got a lot to chew on there. I, I do think when uh, Georgia says, I don't like this about therapy, I can't tell you how many times people have said to me, I thought therapy was supposed to make me feel better. And, uh, uh -huh. and I think of a line, speaking of Ted Lasso that we did, we did an episode on Ted Lasso, but when Ted's visiting his therapist and she says, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. And, uh, True. and she says, I can't be your mentor without occasionally being your tormentor. Right. And so, and so we have to be prepared to face those hard truths about ourselves and the discomfort that facing them brings so that we can move forward and have happier lives and more fulfilling lives and more balanced lives. So yeah. it's my two cents on this. I love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's deep and profound and there are lots of really great lessons to take from this clip. And also just wondering how did this 15 year old girl get to be so mature? Pretty damn impressive. Yeah, <laughs> I would say, well, that's just screenwriting, but I've met those 15 year olds and they are impressive. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> We're really impressive. Jano, yeah. thank you for joining me here. This was really yeah. fun. And yeah, also, my pleasure. if you haven't seen the first episode, go over to Jano's channel on Mended Light and watch it. Also, we did a really fun collab on Ted Lasso, so you should watch that here and on Mended Light. Make sure you subscribe to Mended Light, and thanks for being with us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bob. It's always a pleasure. Okay, keep watching. Click, click.